Okay, so this should be somewhat review for you um, from elementary school. Um, we have so far um, come pretty far through the Elements of Fiction unit. We have discussed the importance of setting, characterization, um, and now we're going to learn about plot, which some of those pieces are part of. Um, so you're, we're going to take some notes today. You're going to be looking for your note sheet that I gave you in class. It looks like this. Um, it is the parts of plot diagram, and we are going to fill in the important information that we need to know um, as sixth graders talking about the plot. Okay, we are still working with our essential question How does understanding plot help me to comprehend fiction? So, first, we're going to define plot. So the plot is the organized sequence of events that make up the story. So it's basically your storyline. And it's what happens to the characters in the story. So it's how they all link together and the organization in which they're written. So you do not need to write anything down for the definition. As in most all of the notes and things that we take, Everything that I would like you to write is in red font. So you're only writing things that I have highlighted in red or I have changed to red font. All right, so the pyramid plot structure is just a visual to help you to understand the, the, um, the natural way that a plot is um, organized. So you start out at the beginning of the story with the first um, part of the plot. Then the second part of the plot, which is typically um, where most of the story takes place. And then, of course, that third part of the plot where you start to um, have some changes occur, the fourth part of the plot, and then the fifth part of the plot. So we're going to label these and define um, and learn a little bit about the different parts of the plot and maybe hopefully learn some new terminology as well. So that first part of the plot um, is the very beginning of a fiction piece of uh, work and that's called the exposition. Now that might be a new term to you. Um, it's something that a lot of times you don't, don't learn that term um, in elementary school, but once you hit middle school, we refer to that very first part of the fiction piece as the exposition. So here we have our characters. This is where we learn about our characters, our main characters. Um, our authors will be developing these characters in this section of the fiction text. Setting is where we're going to have that setting. Um, we're going to learn about, you know, where this is occurring and when, maybe even some weather impacts here. Um, and then also another really big component of the exposition, we never want to forget to look for that main conflict or problem. We usually have that almost always in the exposition. Um, that's what drives the rest of the story, okay? So the main character, there's some sort of a conflict or problem that would drive the rest of the story. Then second um, is the rising action. And you can see that this is the longest part of the plot um, diagram here. Um, and this is where um, your author is going to be trying to um, give you details about this conflict and you know really, really develop that conflict and show how much of a difficulty it is. Um, and it's building interest or suspense, okay? So this is where our authors are trying to keep the reader's interest and they're giving you lots of details about this problem. So again, you are writing all the red font words, okay? Now, the third part of the plot is the climax. Now, this is where the main character comes face to face with a conflict. And sometimes it's really hard to figure out what that point is. Um, but usually the main character may change in some way. So that's why we did so much work last week on characterization and looking at character change, because that can really help us to pinpoint 
where the climax in the story really is, okay? If you do not have time to write these down, you might need to pause the, the video here and go ahead and write the terms where they belong on your plot diagram. Fourth is the falling action, okay? That's the events that occur after the climax, okay? And this is, the problem is usually resolved in the falling action, okay? So that means it's taken care of. Um, it resolves itself or somehow it is resolved. And then finally is the resolution, okay? Um, the resolution, it sounds like it's where your problem is resolved, but really this is just where the loose ends are tied together. Sometimes, you know, it tells us the theme of the story or the author will address the theme in some way and just kind of wrapping things up. So, you know, don't get confused there as to the resolution. Usually the problem is resolved in the falling action and the resolution is really just tying everything together. And depending on the text, um, the resolution may be very short or even missing, um, depending on what type of fiction you are reading. So, um, you know, these need to go into your notes. Make sure you have all of the red, um, red words written in your, on your note sheet. Um, this is my completed note sheet. You can see here how I have all of the information written in there so that you can refer back to it as you read these different stories and try to pick out the different parts of the plot. The more we understand plot and the elements of short stories, um, we can apply that to our writing then and we are um, able to be better writers when we understand um, why authors would write a certain way, okay? So um, hopefully once you fill this note sheet out, you can go ahead and put it into your binder so that you don't lose it. Um, something that you're going to be wanting to keep in there and refer back to throughout the different activities that we're going to be doing this week and then again you're going to want to use that to study before the the final test on elements of fiction so um, make sure that that's complete um, and then we are going to uh, be reading some, some short stories that we will get to practice with the parts of plot